Hello. Let's take a look at ground effect and gain an understanding of what it is and how to work with it. So what is it? Let's start with the definition. In aerodynamics, ground effect is an increase in lift of an aerodynamic flying machine very near the ground. This additional lift is caused by an effective increase in angle of attack without accompanying increase in induced drag. And it's caused by the deflection of the downwashed air. Ground effect disappears when the flying machine is about a half wing span above the surface. We've said before that any increase in lift will create an increase in drag. Ground effect is the exception to that rule. Incidence. In physics, it's the intersection of a line, or something moving in a straight line, such as a beam of light, with a surface. Example, the point of incidence of the beam, is the beam of light in relation to the ground or other surface. So if something has no incidence, it has no angle between the direction of travel and the surface. A wing for example, has no incidence, when it is level with the surface it is flying over. Such a wing would produce so little lift as to be not useful. Therefore, engineers give the wing an angle of incidence, which is an angle of attack even in level flight. Let's look at what makes up ground effect. An angle of incidence is the angle formed between the cord line of the airfoil and the longitudinal axis of the aircraft on which it is mounted. Here we have the cord line between the leading edge and the trailing edge. There's also another reference line parallel with the horizon. The angle created between these two lines is known as the angle of incidence. It's the angle of attack of the wing when the airplane is on a level ground. Typically it's around 4 degrees. One of the effects of this angle of incidence is that the relative airflow has to wash up and over the leading edge. It then continues over the wing, creating lift and on down the trailing edge. Newton's third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The reaction we get from the upwash is downwash at the trailing edge. And so if we look at our relative airflow, we can see that it is actually following the upwash and downwash curves. We know that lift acts perpendicular to the relative airflow. So in practice, the lift vector being produced by the wing is slightly tilted backwards. From the four forces in flight, we also know that any force acting towards the rear of the airplane is drag. Induced drag is that part of the total drag that is created by the production of lift. So the lift, which points straight up, is tilted back slightly. That slight change of direction is enough to make the lift also create some drag. Proximity of ground is the factor that changes the dynamics of our wing's lift. As the wing nears the ground, a higher pressure area is created below. This is due to the higher pressure airflow beneath the wing having less space to escape due to the obstruction by the ground. This obstruction of the air being able to escape underneath the wing causes the higher pressure, which in turn reduces the upwash and downwash of the airflow over the wings. So what we see as the wing is in closer proximity of the ground, the higher pressure beneath the wing reduces the upwash and downwash, in effect straightening out the airflow over the wing. This has the effect of tilting the lift vector back into a more upright position. As the lift is now pointed more upright, more is lift, and less is drag. This increases the lift and reduces the drag, resulting in more lift for the same configuration. It's effectively lessened the induced drag. As you know, induced drag is higher at lower airspeeds. So this helps make ground effect even more noticeable at slower speeds. Wingtip vortices are a major contributing factor to ground effect. We said before that induced drag was aerodynamic drag, produced by an airfoil when it is producing lift. The amount of induced drag is determined by the shape and the area of the airfoil, the angle of attack, the air density and the speed of the air moving over the airfoil. This is the same as our lift formula. Wingtip vortices are tornado-like disturbances, produced at the wingtips any time an airplane wing is producing lift. 
When a wing produces lift, the air pressure at the top of the wing is much lower than the pressure below the wing. So we have a higher pressure below and behind the wing. There is lower pressure above the wing. All air wants to flow from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. On the bottom diagram, you can see the higher pressure flowing from below the wing, to the outside of the wing, the wingtip. It will want to flow over the wingtip to the low pressure area on top of the wing where our lift is. When a wing produces lift, the air pressure at the top of the wing is much lower than the pressure below the wing. This is the reason winglets are so effective at reducing drag, and therefore fuel costs. And let's face it, they just look cool. The winglets not only delay the high pressure air penetrating into the lower pressure area, but they also minimize the size of the vortices, which helps further to reduce drag. When the wing becomes within half length of the ground, it reduces the size of the vortices. This has the same effect as winglets in a way, and helps to reduce drag further. The last thing to look at is the surface area of the wing. As a wing encounters ground effect and is maintained in a constant lift coefficient, there is a reduction in the upwash, downwash and wingtip vortices. This constant lift coefficient is just saying that no change is made to the angle of attack and airspeed. As a result of the reduced tip vortices we just mentioned, the wing, in the presence of ground effect, will behave as if it were of a higher aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is referring to the length, times width of the wings. So the wings theoretically act more like a glider, with a longer width. So this is how ground effect is created, how it works and how it affects the aerodynamics of the airplane. It's possible because of incidence, and the angle of incidence, proximity of ground, wingtip vortices, and the lift vector changing direction slightly. Thanks for watching and safe skies from Ave Briefs.